So, this question is about forces on a golf ball. Let's just have a read through the question, make sure we understand it before we start answering it. It says the golfer practices hitting balls on a golf course. Ball X, so this is X right here, rolls along the level ground as shown in the diagram. Then it says to add labeled arrows to the diagram to show the direction of the two forces acting on ball X. So there are two forces we need to add here, but there are lots and lots of forces that we could add. Now the one that I always think about when drawing force diagrams is weight. And that's because whenever we're on Earth, we've got weight acting down upon us. And this golf ball will have weight acting down upon it. Now we need to start thinking about what else that could be acting on the ball. Now it's rolling along the ground. And whenever you have two surfaces in contact, there's always going to be some friction. And so that's the second force I'm going to add in here. Now, there are lots of other forces that we could add in. We could add in air resistance coming from the center of the ball, acting in the same direction as, air, as the friction. But what most students get wrong in this question is they try and add a force going in the direction the ball is moving. But this is completely wrong. The ball doesn't have a jetpack on it pushing it forwards. It's just rolling along the ground. As Newton's first law states, an object will continue in a state of constant motion unless acted upon by an external force. You don't need a force pushing it forward. We've got weight pulling it onto the ground. We've got friction trying to drag it back. And of course, we could also put on the reaction force acting upwards from the ground against the weight. But friction and weight are the simplest ones to guarantee us the marks. The second question says to explain why this ball slows down and stops. And so we've got to think about what force it is that's slowing it down or decelerating it. Now, of course, the force that we've labeled opposing the motion is friction. And that is going to be what slows it down and ultimately stops it. And so we've got friction acting as the resultant force opposing the motion. So the ball decelerates until it stops. So where are the marks available here? We've got one mark simply for mentioning friction. We've got another mark for saying that it's the resultant force. You could have also said it was an unbalanced force. And then we've got another mark talking about deceleration. Now, there are lots of other marks available here. Whenever we talk about resultant force, we think about F equals M times A, force equals mass times acceleration. And of course, that deceleration is going to depend on the amount of friction and the mass of the ball. And also, you could talk about how kinetic energy is being dissipated uh, as it moves around. But I think it's best to talk about forces since the whole question is generally about forces so far. Now, part B is about the golfer hitting the ball into the air. It's saying it's a different ball, um, but it's a similar ball. So it hits this ball Y into the air at an angle. He gives it the same initial kinetic energy as ball X, but ball Y travels much further, and the question asks us to suggest why this is. Now, if we look back at the force diagram, we've got this friction acting on the ground. But if the ball was hit into the air, then that friction would disappear. There would be no longer any friction acting on the ball. 
So without friction, there's no resultant force decelerating the ball, so the ball moves at a constant speed through the air, and so it goes much, much further. So, ball Y doesn't have friction acting to slow it down, so it goes further. Simple. Part C. It says the mass of the ball is 45 grams. Now, whenever I see this, warning lights start flashing in my mind because I know a mass should never be in grams, it should always be in kilograms. So how do we convert that? We're going to divide it by a thousand because a gram is a much smaller number or a much smaller unit than a kilogram. So we've got to divide that number by a thousand. And whenever I was doing an exam, I would always write next to it what it should be, which is 0 0.045 kilograms. And that's the number we're going to use in any calculations we might be asked for later on in this question. So let's look for some more information. We've got the kinetic energy that the golfer has given the ball of 36 joules. And now here's another question. States the equation linking kinetic energy, mass and speed. So I've got to remember this equation. Kinetic energy equals a half times the mass times the velocity squared. You've got to know that equation. Otherwise, you're going to miss that easy mark. Now, whenever we're asked for an equation, we're always asked to use it in the next part of the question. So this one is asking us to calculate the initial speed of ball Y. Now, already I can see this is going to be a challenging question because it's giving me four marks. So that means there's going to be lots of pitfalls. Now, the first pitfall I already identified when I noted that the, gra the mass was given to us in grams rather than kilograms. So... I've already avoided that pitfall by converting it into kilograms. The second pitfall is that I've been given, I'm being asked for an equation, but it's not in the typical way that I would remember it. So I've got to rearrange the equation. Now, if we want to rearrange kinetic energy equals a half times the mass times the velocity squared to give us an equation where we're gonna find out V, then I've got to rearrange that equation using the rules given to me by bid mass. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. So I'm left with 2 times the kinetic energy is equal to the mass times the velocity squared. Now I've got to can put the mass over to the other side. At the moment it's multiplied by V, so I'm going to divide both sides by M. So I get 2Ke divided by M equals V squared. And then the last step is to square root both sides. So 2Ke over m, all square rooted. And this is the equation I need to use here. So V equals the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which was 36 joules, divided by the mass, remembering I've converted it into kilograms, so that's 0 0.045. Now I get out my calculator, calculate all those numbers correctly, and I'm going to get 40 meters per second. Perfect. Next question. Ball Y reaches a maximum height of 30 meters. Suggest how the golfer should hit ball Y so it can reach a greater height? Well, there's a few ways you can answer this question, but this whole question has been all about forces. So let's make life easy for ourselves. The golfer should hit the ball with more force. Easy. Don't say hit it harder. Because this is a physics question. 
We don't use words like harder in physics to describe hitting something with more force. Use the right language and you'll get the marks.